Hey guys, so today's video is a project pan finale and I know usually my project pan finales don't come until the end of the year, the end of December, but I've made the decision to end my current 2022 project pan now. I've just been doing a lot of thinking and I have kind of come to the realization that the way that I've been panning for the past, I guess, three years now, it's just not working for me anymore. And I'm going to expand on that and explain kind of my thought process, but I've decided to basically completely rethink how I approach project panning. So the way that I've been panning for the past few years is I'll do a year-long rolling project 10 pan, which means that at the beginning of the year, I pick out 10 items that I want to mostly use up. Sometimes the goal might just be to hit pan. And once I use it up or meet whatever goal, I roll it out and roll something new in. And I think what I've realized about that structure, at least the way that it works for me and my brain is I end up almost feeling beholden to those products and I, whether I realize it or not, I do feel like I kind of force myself to use those products. It's like I'm arbitrarily focusing on a selected number of products that I picked out at the beginning of the year and in turn I end up kind of neglecting a lot of my other products and maybe also even neglecting the products that I would otherwise maybe want to be using. And I'm somebody that as part of my creative process with makeup, I've realized is that I go through a lot of different phases and ebbs and flows of what I'm enjoying in a given moment, in a season, whatever. And so I just think this like really rigid project 10 pan is like, it's just not quite working for me anymore. And I think I'm also somebody that I tend to take things a little bit too seriously in life. And I think I also am kind of, I've started to take makeup a little bit too seriously. And I've started almost, not maybe not necessarily forcing myself to use these products, but I, I, I'm using these products almost out of a sense of obligation to finish them. I talked about this a little bit in my Project Pan Lessons video that I posted a few weeks ago, like five things I've learned in five years of Project Panning. And I talked about how I'm learning to just have fun with makeup more and not view it from this place of, oh, I have too much makeup or I have more makeup than I need. Because in reality, I don't need makeup. None of us need makeup. This is a hobby. This is meant to be fun. This is meant to be enjoyable. And while I want to keep a curated collection that inspires me and I don't want to have I'm just not somebody that wants to have a very maximalist makeup collection. I don't want to get so focused on this unattainable end goal of, I don't even know exactly, minimalism, maybe not owning more makeup than I quote unquote need, but I'm not, I'm never going to get there because it's, that's, that shouldn't really be my end goal. I think my end goal should just be to have fun with makeup and enjoy the process of experimenting and exploring this creative avenue that I love so much. And it kind of hit me recently that there hasn't really been a time over the past three, four, five years that I've been really into project panning that I haven't had a project pan going on at any given moment. Except for maybe at the end of the year between my finale and my intro, I might have a few days in between, but I'm pre I've pretty much been constantly panning <laughs> for the past five years. And honestly, I thought about quitting panning altogether, but I don't think I want to do that because there are a lot of things about panning that I love and that I don't want to give up. And I really like having this flow of products that I'm working on using up and moving out of my collection and I don't think I'd be able to actually completely use up as many products as I do if I didn't have a project pan going on. So I'm not going to quit panning but I am going to change how I do it and I, I, I'm really excited about this change and I think a lot of you are going to really enjoy this as well. So Here's how I'm going to start doing my project pants moving forward. At the beginning of each quarter, I'm going to completely start fresh. And I'm going to have a week or two at the beginning of each quarter. So at the beginning of July, that's the start of a new quarter of the year. And we're going to kind of restart a new project pan then. For those one to two weeks, I'm going to just not have any project pan items. I'm going to give myself complete free roam of my collection. I'm going to just play really get acquainted with everything in my collection, pinpoint any products that I realized are maybe getting close to expiring or that I'm you know, maybe halfway finished with that I wanna go ahead and use up. And also just see what are the products and what are the techniques that I'm really gravitating towards for that chunk of time. And I'm gonna make note of that. I'm gonna even maybe set aside the products that I found myself 
just naturally wanting to reach for a lot. And from there, I'm going to select around 10 items, maybe eight to 12 items. It doesn't have to be a strict 10, but just a, a selection of products that I do want to work on panning for the next three months. And then at the end of that quarter, which I think will be nice because it'll also coincide with the start of a new season, I can start over, start fresh. There will probably be some products that I do want to roll over into the next project, but I'm also going to spend another week or two without any project pan items, just exploring my collection, seeing what I naturally end up reaching for, and deciding on my new items from there. So I'm really excited about this approach because I think it'll allow me to just kind of get back to the fun of makeup and also just lean into what I actually like using rather than the products that I decided to pan and that I'm going to stick to because I just think makeup should be fun. <laughs> and I'm trying to like relearn how to just have fun and not take things too seriously. So that's the plan. So I think that the chosen products for each of my kind of seasonal quarterly project pans, they're going to be a mix of things that I'm just loving and naturally reaching for that I want to maybe work on hitting pan on or using up. And then also I'll have some products thrown in there that are either getting close to expiring or that I um, am getting close to using up anyway and I just want to go ahead and finish them up. So it's really not going to be that different from the way that I've been panning before, but I just think that this slight shift and also just allowing myself to refresh and restart every three months will just make it a lot more fun. So I'll still have project pan updates monthly at the beginning of each month, so that's not going to change. And in those updates, like I always have, I'll show my progress. And if there's anything that I've decided I'm not enjoying or that I don't want to continue panning, I'm going to be honest with myself and just roll, roll that out. And I think, you know, it's not that I haven't allowed myself to roll things out that I haven't been enjoying in the past, but I think maybe I just haven't been fully honest with myself because I felt like, oh, this bronzer, I told myself I was going to pan this, this is my oldest bronzer, I should use this up. But if I'm not loving it, or if maybe there's another bronzer that I'd have more fun panning, even if it's not my oldest one that I should use up, I should just be honest with myself and let myself switch it out. There's no reason to force myself to use products that I'm not loving and enjoying. And, you know, if... I don't end up using up every single item in my collection, that's fine with me. I think I used to have this really unattainable goal, this kind of perfectionist goal of, you know, one day I want every single item that I own to be panned, to be used up. And that's just not realistic for me. It's it's not. And so I'm I was just setting myself up for this constantly chasing this unattainable outcome. And yeah, there was just always this like slight element of shame behind the reason why I was panning. And I don't want that to be allowed in my life anymore. No more of that. So, you know, at, at the end of the year, I always do my year end makeup empties, all the makeup I used up that year. This year, I'm actually going to be doing one at the end of June because once again, we're moving. I don't want to haul a bunch of trash with me across the country. <laughs> so we're going to do one in June and one in December, and I'll still be able to show you everything I used up in the whole year. And I want those year end makeup empties to almost be like a time capsule of the products that I loved enough to use up that year. Keyword on the products that I loved, not not the products that I force myself to use up out of obligation. And as another part of this, I also want to just start being better about allowing myself to declutter and pass on items that I'm not enjoying. Even if I bought it with my own money, I think I used to almost use panning as a punishment for using up products that I bought, maybe purchases that weren't well thought out, or even purchases that were well thought out, but it just happened to not like the product as much as I thought I would, I would still force myself to pan it as a way to get my money's worth. And it's not like I've ever really hate panned products. Like if, if I was truly hating something, I would pass it on. But I think there was still always this kind of element of like, oh, well, you bought this, so you should use it up. You should get your money's worth. But if I'm not, if there's something else I'd have more fun using up, why not just let myself use that thing up instead? And if, if the product has already been purchased, there's really not that big of a difference between using it up versus not using it up. I mean, it's already been bought. So either I could use it up or I could give it to someone else who might want to use it up. Or if the product is just a total dud and I don't think anyone's going to like it, I can just dump the product out and recycle the packaging. The damage is done, whether I use it up or not. So, so yeah, I think that even though Panning has always generally been pretty fun for me. I think I was just taking it a little bit too seriously before, and I was focusing too much on the end result of the satisfaction of using up products to the point where it was just making my everyday makeup routine less fun. So that's why I'm rethinking how I'm structuring it, and I think that this new way of doing it is going to be 
so much better for me. And I, you know, I hope that maybe it inspires those of you panners out there to think about like, what are, what are your reasons for project panning? Is there kind of like a, a shame-based element to it? Because if so, I really encourage you to think about that and switch it up. And I think as another part of this new approach, I'm probably going to be less rigid in my buying rules as well. I started out this year with a list of items that I was not going to be allowed to buy for the first half of the year, and I also set a goal of having my empties total value be around the same as my spending amount for the year. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue with that or not. I don't know if that's really helpful for me anymore. And I also think, I think I've just gotten to the point in my makeup consumption journey that I think I can just trust myself to make intentional purchases. And I don't think I'm really at risk of over-consuming, over-spending. I think I have developed a lot of really good spending habits through panning and through just, you know, over over the years of my channel. I, I think I'm just a smart spender these days. So I don't think I really need to worry about having these rigid rules or makeup budgets or anything like that. So if that means maybe going through a month or two where I'm buying a little bit more because I'm just in the mood to try some new stuff, I'm, that's great with me. If I go through a couple months where I decide I don't want to buy much, that's also great. And I think I've just gotten to the point where I can trust myself to do that, to enjoy makeup and not have to worry a whole lot about overspending or overconsuming and punishing myself for liking makeup because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with liking makeup. It's an art, it's a creative outlet, it's fun, and that's what I want my channel to reflect. So I just want to let loose a little bit, have some fun, enjoy my beautiful makeup collection. I still want to I still want to pan products. I still want to use things up. I, I love the satisfaction of using up products. I love being able to track my progress and share that with you guys. I know you guys, a lot of you guys really love watching my project pan updates as well. So that's not going away. It's just, hopefully it's just going to be a little bit more fun for all of us. I'm really excited, like I said. And, you know, we are, oh my gosh, it is... <laughs> We're leaving for Seattle in 10 days. Um, that still hasn't hit me yet. I am not ready. Um, I still need to do my big collection declutter. And I think this upcoming declutter is going to be a lot different from past declutters that you've seen from me because I'm really coming at it from the angle of do I want to pay to ship this item cross country? Because that's basically what I'm doing. And I'm going to kind of be looking at every single product I own and thinking to myself, would I be sad if I lost this? Would I feel the need to replace this if I lost it? Do I love this product? And if not, I'm probably just going to pass it on. So I'm probably, I, I am really looking at this as a good opportunity, kind of a rare opportunity to just start fresh. I don't normally declutter that intensely. <laughs> like, normally if a product is mediocre or better, I will keep it and continue to use it. But I think it's going to be a little bit different, and I'm excited to just give myself permission to start fresh. And so I think it's also really good timing to go ahead and end this project pan that I've been doing for the past six months. I am going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a kind of finale on all the products, show you any progress that I have made. I know we're only halfway through the month, so I'm not going to have tons of really big updates on most of these products. A lot of these products I haven't even used at all this month. <laughs> Several of these products I probably will end up decluttering before the move. And uh, a couple of them I think I will probably roll into my new project pan that I'm starting in July. So let's go ahead. I do have one really exciting update though. I do have an empty and it is the Becca liquid highlighter in champagne pop. I ended up mixing this in with the rest of a body lotion or actually it was a hand cream that I'm using as a body lotion. Um, and I did film that as a YouTube short. So I will link that for you. I also posted it on my Instagram and my TikTok. So uh, I just showed how I do it. It's a really great way to use up liquid highlighters. You can also do it with powder highlighters if you just crush them up, mix it in with your body lotion, and it makes a glowy body lotion. So this product is finished. It was just so close to being done that even though I really liked it as a face highlighter, I just wanted to go ahead and finish it off so that I wasn't lugging a like 90% empty <laughs> product with me cross country. So that is done. That is exciting to have that finished. I've been working on that since 
I think the beginning of the year. So that feels really good to have done. I had already removed the stopper a couple months ago. Like it was getting pretty low. So it feels really good to have that finished. Bite Sugar Drizzle, I have used another handful of times since my last update. I'll go ahead and insert a progress photo of this as well, just so you can see. I think I've made a teeny tiny bit of progress. Really been enjoying this. I do think this is probably something I will roll into my next project pan to go ahead and finish it off, because I, I go through glosses pretty quickly, and I love this gloss. So I did repress. You might have seen in my Repress With Me video this past weekend, I did repress my CoverGirl Cheekers Blush in Natural Twinkle and my Jordana Powder Bronzer. Unfortunately, I think the Jordana Powder Bronzer has been ruined <laughs> by my lovely bright idea to repress it with my Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray. I wanted to see if it worked because I've heard of people using setting sprays to repress products in the past. Unfortunately, it is now near impossible to pick up any product from this bronzer. So the reason I repressed it was because it kept getting hard pan just over and over and over again. And I wanted to see if repressing it would make it less prone to hard pan. And um, unfortunately now it is basically just entirely hard pan. <laughs> so it probably would have worked better if I had just used isopropyl alcohol like I normally do to repress things. I kind of just wanted to experiment and see if that worked. Fortunately, I wasn't that uh, attached to this bronzer. Like I spent like $4 on it. I like it, but it's not like my favorite bronzer of all time. So that was why I was willing to experiment and take a little bit of a risk by repressing it with that setting spray. Oh well, we learned a valuable lesson. RIP Jordana bronzer. I did get at least some good use out of it before I destroyed it. <laughs> um, and then the CoverGirl Cheekers blush, I did finally repress because if you saw in my last update, it, the pan had really expanded quite a bit and I only had really a little bit in the sides. So uh, it was just getting a lot harder to pick it up on a brush. And now obviously it looks brand new. It looks like I have basically a full pan here, but it's really a very thin layer. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not, to be honest with you. I'm gonna have to see how my declutter ends up going. But honestly, this is one of my least favorite blushes in my collection at this point. I just found a lot of formulas that I like a lot better. So I might not even take this with me. Uh, cross country. I honestly might not. I haven't decided. Like I said, my mindset with the declutter is going to be pretty cutthroat, so I don't know if this will make the cut, but either way, it does feel good knowing that I got some good use out of it, made some good progress. I think I've probably gotten my money's worth out of this by now. I mean, I think this was like less than four dollars, kind of similar to that Jordana bronzer. So I don't know. We'll see about that. Stay tuned for the declutter to see if I ended up keeping that. The e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I have used this four times since my last update, um, and I mean, I really don't think there's much left in here. I marked it up here because that is where you can really see that line demarcation when I leave it sitting upright, but honestly, I think that the product itself is actually much further down than what it appears to be, because when I look in there, it actually dips down pretty far. So there's not a whole lot left in here. I really do like this concealer, so I think I will hold on to it and use it up at some point. But honestly, lately I've been really more so enjoying my Urban Decay Stay Naked concealer. I mentioned in my Shot My Stash video, I'm obsessed with this concealer. And because this is a mini, I actually think I'm close to finishing this. So I'm kind of trying to use this up before the move rather than the e.l.f. one because I think I have a better chance of finishing this. So wish me luck on that. This wasn't in the project pan, but I just kind of realized recently like, wow, there's not a whole lot left in there. You've got, you can see little windows in there. So I'm um, hoping to finish that. So that's probably the main one I'm gonna be using for the next couple of weeks. I also have the NYX Born to Glow Foundation. This is really, really low. I have only used it a couple times since my last update. So I don't have any new progress to show you, but I mean, there's not a whole lot left in here. I'm kind of thinking for products that are so close to being done, I'm almost wondering if it even makes sense to take them with me because again, one of I got a comment recently with a bunch of decluttering like tips. I think this is somebody that had also moved around quite a bit or moved cross country. They mentioned that, you know, if a product is close to being empty, it doesn't make sense to take it with you because you're essentially transporting trash. Because there is, you know, a decent amount of product left in here. Like I probably have another month or so left of use out of this, but for the most part, this is empty. Like this is more empty than it is full. <laughs> also, like if this were my favorite foundation of all time, I probably would take it with me, but it's not my favorite foundation of all time. I do have foundations that I like more than this. I do like this one in the summertime, but I have other ones that I like equally, if not more, that are not 
like mostly empty. So that's another thing I'm kind of thinking about. So once again, stay tuned to see if I ended up keeping that. I'm gonna try to get as much use out of it as I can before we go, but I'm also not going to lose sleep over it. And then the, this is the Cloven Hallow Hydra Tint in Blossom. This, even though it is honestly, I think really close to being finished, I will be keeping this and using it up all the way through because as you guys know, this is one of my favorite blushes ever. Liquid cream powder across the board. I love this one so much and it is discontinued as well. So I am planning on savoring this until the very last drop. But I mean, this is looking really close to being done. I drew another line with my black nail polish just now because I finally think that it is, it has settled below the last line that I drew like three months ago. I mean, check that out. There's like hardly anything in there. So, and honestly, the brush is not really picking anything up. So I may actually try to dump this out into a separate container and possibly just try to finish it up before we go, now that I'm realizing just how little is left in there. So I will keep you guys updated on that. I've got my two eyeliners, the NYX Vivid Brights I actually haven't used at all yet this month. I do plan to continue trying to use it throughout the summer because it's a really fun summer pastel yellow. And then the Marc Jacobs Highliner in Black. There's not a whole lot left in here. This is, this is really stiff, and one of you guys told me that it's not supposed to be that stiff. And, you know, because Marc Jacobs, actually, a lot of you guys also told me, Marc Jacobs went out of business, apparently. I don't know where I've been. <laughs> I feel like no one's been talking about that on YouTube, but Marc Jacobs Beauty apparently went out of business, which explains why all their products have been marked down and or discontinued for the longest time. But I bought this last year, like last spring, and it's quite possible that I got an old batch because they were just about to go out of business, if not already went out of business at that time. So now I'm kind of thinking like, wow, I guess this is older than I thought and it's not supposed to be as stiff as it is. So I, you know, I have gotten some good use out of it over the past few months. It still works fine. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it, but also I do have another black pencil liner from CoverGirl, the Exhibitionist Coal Eyeliner Pencil that I do like better than the Marc Jacobs, so it's looking like I might actually just pass on the Marc Jacobs one, but we'll see. I don't think I have any measurable progress to show you since my last Project Pan update two weeks ago, but that is how that is going. And then the final product is the CoverGirl Lipstick in Honeyed Bloom. I haven't used this at all since my last Project Pan update, but it is a teeny tiny little nub. I do think that I will be keeping this and eventually using it up because I do really like this lipstick. It's a gorgeous like soft pink nude, also beautiful as a cream blush. So that is my little project pan finale. I know it's a pretty anticlimactic finale, but stay tuned for my kind of reintroduction to project panning that'll probably be coming once I get settled in into our new place in July, probably around the midpoint of July is when that'll be. And I am really happy to have that one little liquid highlight done. Um, I've used up a really good number of products so far this year through my project pan. I used up my Jordana lip liner in Rock and Rose. I used up my Pixie Rose Glow Mist, my CoverGirl eyeliner in Rich Brown, my Milani Gloss in Soft Rose, Pacifica Liquid Cover Concealer, my e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Pink Cosmo. So I feel like I've been really successful so far this year, but I'm really excited to just be kind of starting over, starting fresh, and, and hopefully just adopting a slightly better approach for myself. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will stick with me and keep watching my, my makeup journey here on YouTube. I love being able to document my kind of evolution as a makeup enthusiast here on my channel. So I look forward to talking to you in my next video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.